Good evening and welcome to this edition of News Leader. Today is Tuesday, July the 12th, 2022. I'm Andrew Todd. In tonight's news, Thunder Radio is hosting a county race political forum. Dr. Glass was honored at Motlow and an Estill Springs man was involved in a standoff with police. We'll have all these stories and more on tonight's News Leader. Welcome back. Thunder Radio Political Forum for the upcoming August general election will be held on Thursday, July 14th. In a format similar to past years, Thunder Radio will welcome candidates involved in contested races. Some races will include a debate-style format, while others will include candidate speeches. The schedule for the evening is as follows. 6 to 6.08 p.m., candidates for road superintendent. 6.12 to 6.37, candidates for Coffee County Mayor. 6.45 to 6.53, candidates for county clerk. 6.57 to 7.33, candidates for Coffee County Sheriff. 7.37 to 8.10, candidates for Manchester Alderman. Multiple races will be contested in the August election, including Coffee County Sheriff, Coffee County Mayor, Coffee County Clerk, and Coffee County Road Superintendent. The event will be held from 6 to 8.10 p.m. Thursday, July 14th, at the church at 117, an event facility located in downtown Manchester. Early voting for the August 4th election begins on July the 15th and runs through July 30th. The Thunder Radio Political Forum is open and free for anyone to attend. It will also be broadcast live on Thunder Radio and on their Facebook page. We will video stream the event and are working on a live stream. Check our Facebook page for information on Thursday. And we'll be back with more news later after these messages. I am tremendously blessed to be living at Parkview and very happy to be part of a loving and caring community. Best thing you can say is, is this really a great place to live? That's all there is to it, no doubt about that. It's your home. You just do what you, what you would if you were at your private home. You know, we love it. It's great. It's just like having a whole neighborhood around you and, and, and it's fun. It's just a great place to live. We teach Parkinson's patients how to move big and not let the Parkinson's slow them down. I've had patients I've treated in-house that could not even stand up, could not roll over in the bed, left the facility walking with a walker, have come back to us and outpatient and continued their big program and are now completely, you know, handling life. The success of the program is just phenomenal. Let us champion your recovery. Life Care Center of Tullahoma. Welcome back. At the most recent Manchester Board of Mayor and Aldermen meeting, the Manchester Fire Department promoted several firemen. I was there and brought back this video. Next on the agenda is Manchester Fire Department promotions. Do you want to share the contract? Do you want to share the
you know what time, but I'm going to let you uh, call your name out individually. So we can live home. Would you hold up your right hand, please? I, LeBron Graham, Brandon Spry, Ethan Crouch, and Jay Michael do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. And of the state of Tennessee. And I will discharge the duties of firefighter. For the city of Manchester, Tennessee. Faithfully. Honestly. Honestly. Impartially. Impartially. And to the best of my ability. The contributions of Dr. Frank Glass, President Emeritus of Montlow State Community College, continue to yield dividends well into his retirement of 19 years. He recently received the Distinguished Tennessee Board of Regents Chancellor's Award for Excellent in Philanthropy. The award was presented at the Montlow College Foundation Trustees June meeting on the Moore County campus. Dr. Michael Torrance, Motlow president, said, quote, It is my honor and pleasure to present the Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Philanthropy to Dr. Glass for 2022. Dr. Glass continues as an icon across the Motlow community, and his stewardship and love for the college is unwavering. The Motlow College Foundation and Motlow State Community College appreciate his leadership. As the third president of Motlow, his legacy is embedded in Motlow's mission to enrich and empower our students and the communities we serve." End quote. The Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Phil Philanthropy recognizes an individual or organization who has given special assistance and resources to a Tennessee Board of Regents institution. This includes outstanding volunteer efforts in fundraising or expanding business employee collaborations. Dr. Glass served as Montlow's president for 16 years from 1987 through 2003. He is the longest tenured Montlow president and holds the distinguished title of President Emeritus. His commitment and dedication to the college spanned more than five decades. His career started at Montlow in 1975 as the Dean of Instruction and he subsequently transitioned to the Dean of the College under the presidency of Dr. Harry Wagner. He continued as Dean of College until he became President in 1987. He retired as President in 2003. During his presidency, he spearheaded the fundraising efforts for the Foundation. Along with longtime supporter Morris Simon, Glass set a goal to launch a $5 million endowment campaign. Today, the Foundation's endowment is more than two times the original $5 million goal. Dr. Glass was influential in laying the framework for accomplishing that goal. Dr. Glass was the originator of the Naming Opportunities fundraising campaign that netted hundreds of thousands of dollars for the foundation. Through the campaign, businesses and industry, as well as families and individuals, were given the opportunity to invest in local higher education and students by purchasing classrooms, labs, auditoriums, gymnasiums, and many other spaces along with endowed scholarships. On many occasions, Dr. Glass would host potential donors on campus to include lunch and a tour. He was a master at laying the groundwork and presenting research to potential donors to engage them in finding a naming opportunity in support of growing the endowment. Under his presidency, many plaques were secured and continue to hang across the college. Additionally, the Montlow College Foundation Gala began under his leadership. It continues as the foundation's most significant scholarship fundraising event to support students. This year was the 30th anniversary of the Montlow Foundation Gala. Dr. Glass spearheaded yet another fundraising tradition with the beginning of golf tournaments across the service area, and this year marked the 30th anniversary of the initial match known as the Charles Cleghorn Tournament in Fayetteville-Lincoln County area. Local nonprofit entities replicate many of these fundraising activities. He was a visionary president who realized the need for Motlow to have a presence in campus in Rutherford County. He continues to serve as a Motlow College Foundation trustee 
and is a dedicated volunteer for the foundation. He continues to solicit potential donors on behalf of the foundation. He provides guidance and support to each Montlou College president that has served since him. And after these messages, we'll be right back. MacArthur Manor Assisted Living is passionate about creating better experiences for our Manchester seniors. Our residents describe us in a few words. Welcoming. When you walk through the doors at MacArthur Manor, we'll treat you like family. Caring. Through high standards of personalized care, we help residents live life to its fullest. Engaging. With a wide range of life-enriching activities, there is something for everyone at MacArthur Manor. With our residents and staff now vaccinated, call us today to schedule your safe and personalized tour. We tend to lose our motivation when we have something that's chronic, but you've got to do what you can early on as you can. After I'd exercise like that, I would have a lot of energy to do housework or whatever I needed. Well, I would recommend it highly to anyone at any degree of Parkinson. Let us champion your recovery. Life Care Center of Tullahoma. Welcome back. An Estill Springs man remains in Franklin County Jail on a $500,000 bond after being arrested on aggravated assault, weapons, and drug charges for allegedly barricading himself inside a residence and firing at deputies. Philip Matthew Elliott of 496 Sarvis Branch Road in Estill Springs was placed in custody and transported to the Franklin County Jail, in Franklin County Jail on Thursday. He is charged with aggravated assault, reckless endangerment, unlawful carrying or possession of a weapon, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony, simple possession or casual exchange of a Schedule IV narcotic, possession of drug paraphernalia, and resisting arrest. He also had a drug-related bench warrant issued against him. Sheriff's Office reports that the deputies, while attempting to serve a criminal warrant, became engaged in a barricaded suspect situation at a residence on Sarvis Branch Road in Estill Springs on Thursday afternoon. Reports said authorities did attempt to deploy tear gas and the sus suspect discharged a firearm in the direction of law enforcement officers. A second attempt was made to deploy tear gas, and once again the suspect discharged a firearm, report said. Verbal communication was established with the suspect, and a short time later he was taken into custody. A subsequent search of the residence did show that the dwelling was booby-trapped with fishing hooks hanging from the ceiling at eye level, and boards with nails in them facing upward had also been placed on the ground. Various firearms and ammunition were also seized from the residence. Elliot is scheduled to appear in Franklin County General Sessions Court on September 26th. The Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency releases videos to help residents enjoy our beautiful state. In this video, we get a useful lesson on how to fillet a catfish. Okay, on these catfish or basically any fish, if you get ready to flay, you come right here behind the gill. There's a hard bone right there. You come right around and down. And then when you come down the backbone after you get that cut, you put the knife in and come right down by the dorsal fin right through here. When you get past the rib cage, you can go all the way through with a knife and just come down the backbone to the tail right there and then come back up and make your finished cut. You'll be cutting right around that line up and you'll peel the fillet off the ribs down. And once you get it peeled off the ribs, it'll all lay back and then you can just take the meat right off the skin. Right. You go in just, and you feel it go down basically to the skin, and then you turn your knife almost flat, but just a very slight angle. And you're sliding right across the skin. You can see the skin, there's nothing there. And there's your filet. 
Well, now that we've got all the fish filleted and cleaned up and washed and we put them on ice for a little bit to get them a little bit firmer and stuff, the next step to getting ready to prepare your food is I like to cut these into like nuggets or small strips. A uh, couple of reasons. The batter, you have more batter around all of them, your cornmeal, your batter, whichever, whatever you like the best. They cook quicker. It seems like the fish cooks more even because you don't have that real thick piece and thin piece. So you, to me, you get an even cook on them and uh, you just get more batter. And I don't know, it, to me, it don't taste as fishy. All right, we're getting ready to batter these fish up. You just drop them in the bag and, and shake them up. Mike's gonna be over here helping me. He's gonna do the cooking. He's got that oil real hot. Real simple, you just put them in the bag, shake them up, get them covered real good. caught the catfish, uh, we cleaned them, we cooked them, we are now about to eat them. Uh, we went from field to fork or lake to, to fork and uh, I want to say thank you to my friend Anthony for coming and, and showing us how to fillet them and, and cook them and, and for David coming out today and, and helping us catch them. I thought it was a good day, it was a fun day, and uh, I think everyone should go out and try to do this because it was a blast. So uh, get out there and go fishing. And we'll be right back with more news after these messages. It's not invoice. It's not MSRP. It's not Christmas Day, although it may feel like it. It's the lowest prices in Middle Tennessee, period. Get to Stan McNabb Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram or Stan McNabb Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac before these prices are gone forever. The individuals with dementia, those with Parkinson's, those that have maybe mobility issues, need caregivers. Well, those caregivers are 24 hours a day at home and they never get a rest. And if they have to go to work, they're kind of out of luck. So that's why Trinity came into existence 25 years ago, to allow the caregivers to have a safe center where they could put their loved ones, know they would be well cared for, stimulated, fed good nutritious meals, have activities to their level, and then the caregiver can stop by and pick them up and go on home and have some continuity into their life. Welcome back. The Stan Allen Band recently performed at South Jackson Civic Center's outdoor stage. News leader's John Gray was there and brought us back a song. I got a run down beat up, straight down, straight up, a roller coaster hard. When I think I'm getting down, the next ride I always start. How long is being holy?
meal and share and have a heart inside. There's no other cry they say this right too dangerous and tall. The one who runs the biggest risk is the one who's jumping. multi-instrumental players. Playing guitar tonight, Mr. Pike Saunders. Y'all give him a hand, y'all. Don't forget to tune in to this week's Living Show tonight at 6.30 p.m., Thursday morning at 9 a.m., and Thursday, Friday, and Saturday evenings at 6.30 p.m. This week's guests include representatives from the Isaiah 117 house who are having a lemonade stand day this weekend. Jim and Inge Wood will come by to let everyone know about their upcoming performance at the Tullahoma Farmers Market, and Namie of Manchester will invite people involved with caring for folks with mental health issues to come to their support group. All that and more on this week's Living. And stay with us, we'll have your weather forecast right after these messages. I feel like we're safe at Park View. There's somebody on staff all the time. So if you need help, help us there. We are surrounded with people that are looking after us and, and taking care of us. The staff is wonderful and always available. We feel so safe and secure here. I feel safe at Parkview all the time. 
My husband was diagnosed with a spinal infection. He lost his ability to swallow and the movement of his legs. I couldn't turn over in bed, I couldn't walk, I couldn't eat. They were just wonderful in the treatment and care they gave my husband. I uh, regained my mobility where I was able to go home. It is miraculous. Let us champion your recovery. Life Care Center of Tullahoma. MacArthur Manor Assisted Living is passionate about creating better experiences for our Manchester seniors. Our residents describe us in a few words. Welcoming. When you walk through the doors at MacArthur Manor, we'll treat you like family. Caring. Through high standards of personalized care, we help residents live life to its fullest. Engaging. With a wide range of life enriching activities, there is something for everyone at MacArthur Manor. With our residents and staff now vaccinated, call us today to schedule your safe and personalized tour. Welcome back. We'll take a look at your weather forecast at this time, starting with your weather history on this date. Our record high was in 1930 at 100 degrees. Record low for this day was in 1926 at 51 degrees. The average high for this day is 87 and the average low is 68. Chance of storms for tonight with a low of 69. 40% chance of storms for Wednesday with a high of 87 and a low of 67. And a slight chance of storms for Thursday with a high of 86 and a low of 66. And that's our news leader report for this evening. We invite you to join us each Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday evenings at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. for News Leader. Stay safe and have a great evening.